Yeah, I want to present you the MART initiative. Um, some, I want to talk about non regulation, uh, not on SSPD, and how we, what regulation can do um, uh, for risk assessment. I want to emphasize before I have, uh, that SSPD, it's, not, it's a pre made market instrument and uh, cannot replace regulation. So if you want to make a risk assessment, you need generated data uh, and, and by international harmonized methods. And if you don't have uh, this data, probably the methods also need comparable. Uh, so uh, some general remarks uh, before. For sure, we act in a global market and we need uh, research for sustainable innovation legal requirements. And I mentioned already, research results must be comparable and reproducible. And therefore, we uh, need these standards uh, by the OECD. And these uh, are international harmonized. And the advantage of this OECD test is that um, they can be combined with the uh, MID concept for OECD member countries. I will talk that afterwards. So why are these uh, test kinds so important? So um, these are essential for the protection of uh, human health and the environment for sure. And they guarantee that the um, safety assessment of chemicals and materials over the whole life cycle is based on valid data. Um, the OECD test kinds uh, are internationally accepted standards for the safety testing of chemicals and they support also implementation and enforcement of legislation and are also essential for the safe and sustainable innovation and the competitiveness of industry. So uh, the mutual exception of DAPES agreement ensures that uh, these test results generated in accordance with the OECD test plans and the OECD principle of good laboratory practice are accepted in all OECD countries. And uh, data generated according to the OECD test plans are internationally comparable for research and development as already for regulation. And for sure this um, uh, facilitates innovation, international trade, and the reduction of non trade barriers to trade. Uh, and the MID agreement also ensures the acceptance by relevant authorities and supports innovation long-term investments. Because why? Because these guidelines are used by industry in both the innovation process and also to fulfill uh, regulatory requirements. They give also rise to cost savings for industry and prevents many unnecessary tests being carried out and I will mention this already reduced trade barriers. So the MART initiative uh, was um, launched during the European Council President of MART in 2017. Uh, there come up the idea to create a network uh, that advocates for peppered test methods uh, as a first step nanomaterials. So it's an informal group, it's a network of international experts on a base, works on a voluntary base without any official mandate. And uh, the main goal here is to address the importance of this international harmonized and standardized testing and measurement methods I talked before. Uh, you, here you can see a little bit the governance, how it works. So um, there are several inputs coming from ECHA, from the research projects from the nano safety cluster from international partners um, and yeah commitment from member states for sure this is very important and also from other international projects so what is the motivation um, we want to strengthen trust in innovation and legislation uh, and uh, yeah i mentioned already the standards help to overcome trade barriers and we try to get the EU-funded projects with thanks to the international cooperation of experts from research industry and regulation. So the aim is really to steer towards priorities of the work on test measurement and verification procedures and has also the goal to uh, international exchange and cooperate. So it's a, we try to build up a dialogue between different stakeholders and strengthen trust in legislation safe innovation. So what we have, uh, we have achieved so far, uh, we had uh, several EU-funded projects um, and uh, they support the development and adopt of more than 20 OECD test guidelines. And we also get a better understanding now between research and regulatory needs. Yeah. And I hope we will uh, go on with these uh, achievements in the future. Here you can see like, uh, little uh, finance projects underwise in Europe. 
like Nan Harmony is going on and will end at the end of September with Nanomed, Macrame and also several TESH guidelines uh, uh, yeah, developed by, uh, funded by the German Federal Environment Ministry. Um, we have developed a position paper. You can download it from the website mentioned here. Um, what is the main message of this uh, position paper? At the first, test guidance support innovation and uh, reduce trade barriers. They support sustainable innovation and uh, trust strengthen in the UN SDGs. Um, the test client, we want to show the test client is also uh, make essential for safe and sustainable innovation for a knowledge base to support continuous innovation and also fostering for sure end user trust in chemicals and materials. Third point, the essential uh, test guidelines are essential for legislation and since of enforceability. So um, we strengthen that um, yeah, to ensure really clear enforceable chemicals legislation, these test guidelines are essential as they form the basis of the vast majority of recognized methods in, for example, the European test method regulation. And uh, what for us is important to show that also constant funding is needed with a European test method strategy. Why is this important? Because um, we could show that existing test guidance were not always applicable uh, for some endpoints and they were missing, while legislation requires uh, much more information on such endpoints for nanomaterials to enter in the market. Uh, and the method development for nanomaterials are still incomplete as it's likely that innovative materials require further more method developments. Um, yeah, these are the cornerstones that should cover, such a strategy should cover. So um, we want to build up a platform for collaboration, which identify endpoints, gaps, which support international collaboration between researchers and regulators, which also ensure the development of test methods that are operable and useful in uh, pre-regulatory and scientific testing, and also increase the likelihood of effective adoption and implementation by the OECD member countries. Yeah. So, um, but it's also clear that a coordinated approach is needed because no country can alone uh, take this and so we are more effective and this helps also avoiding the duplication of work. So we have a website. Um, yeah, feel free to, to go into the website and inform you about the MALT initiative. So my conclusions you can see here. So uh, we need safety research for sustainable innovation. We OC test plans make researchers' results comparable. Malt initiative is really one example uh, how to bring stakeholders together and yeah, tries to bring international experts together uh, to cooperate and this leads also to success. And we need further work and we need such a, a EU test method strategy. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. I think we are well on time again. So if there is any questions from the audience to Alexander or to any of the previous speakers, or if any of the speakers want to ask questions among yourselves, I don't see any hands raised. I will give you, ah, there's a hand up there. Good. Then I start running. Yes, thank you very much. My name is Stem Voss Hansen. I'm from the Technical University of Denmark. I was wondering, with your focus on regulatory accepted test systems versus what we just heard from the previous speaker on ATME and sustainable and safety by design and, and so forth, is there a potential conflict there where you have a lot of focus going in developing fairly innovative, but at least simple test systems and then once industry or whoever has gone through various innovation stages they reach the the end goal and then they have to do all the regulatory testing on top of all the work that they already did and are you also moving towards um double s bd or where are you in in this discussion
Yeah, so I mentioned it before. So SSPD, yes, uh, from my point of view, is a pre-market instrument and it cannot replace legislation. So uh, legislation is very important that uh, ministries did a lot of work to put up such legislation and um, yeah. What about if you all moved a little bit closer to here? <laughs> so okay. Thanks, Alexander. Thomas Kulbusch, um, also a uh, part from the Malta Initiative Board. And maybe in addition to what you were saying already, um, I think that there is no conflict between um, the activities of the Malta Initiative, SSBD, and uh, some of the other activities since also if you are on the pre-market side the tools should be somehow validated or accepted so that you can later on use it um, that you can prove show that with this test result or uh, with this test method we got this result so on the pre-market we can also put it on the market and use the same test results that's i think one important part that you have easy accessible, easy and freely accessible test methods, which uh, may have different levels. So you can, and that's a good thing, you can have something like a guidance, which, uh, and OECD always tries to have practical methods for testing and not the highest sophisticated methods. So I think there's a lot of synergy possible um, between uh, these activities. I see you shaking the, uh, the head and you see it's slightly different, I think. <laughs> Colleague said, if I'm summarizing it correctly, that uh, you need a lab with a good laboratory praxis um, um, to be have accepted results by the uh, test guideline methods, and this is quite expensive. I hope I summarized it, and so it's not that easy accessible. Um, that is, if you want to have the test methods accepted by uh, governance and for registration and for other parts. Still, you can also use, and quite a lot of universities also use these test guidelines without a GLP accreditation. So you can use it, you can with your own confidence test it in a simpler manner. And if you later on want to use it on a legal basis, you already know what the results may be with this test guideline. But, but then you need an accredited uh, laboratory to put it into regulation. But there are different steps possible. It's not always necessary to go for already an accredited laboratory. I think while I go down, one, well, again, echoing some of the discussions this morning is also that we need to speed up. So I think in general, everybody is aware that for the risk assessment, we need to innovate, we need to become faster, we need to become better. So we also hope that with the SSPD, we will bring new methods. As you said, if, if we all agree that these methods work, we can also bring them into regulation over time then. Uh, 